there, Happy Paper people. I'm so glad you're here with me. Um, getting the housework out of the way, you're on Happy Paper People. And if you didn't know that, you do now. And we also have a Facebook group, Happy Paper People. And we'd love for you to make the projects that you see today and share them uh, on our Facebook group. And you could meet other people just like yourself and learn great tips and make friends and find your place. All right, so I wanna show you our All About This Month, All About, the whole month's All About, if you're new to that, um, toilet paper tubes or wrapping paper tubes or you know any sort of you know uh, paper towel, whatever. Um, this is a wrapping paper tube, which I got a lot of use out of because it's, it was really long and that's great. This is the newest kind of wrapping paper tube. <laughs> and they do this a lot now, which is, which is fine because look at this awesome paper that you have. So what I did was I just wet it, uh, I used a spray bottle on it and I ironed it. So I get this nice flat, big paper and I cut it into bite-sized pieces to work with because this is plenty big enough for me. Um, there's another piece. I think, and I didn't get this one very wet, I don't think, but um, you need to do both sides so you can loosen up and heat up the fibers on both sides because it makes a big difference. So I do one side, do the other, and then I go back and do that last one again because I want to push it back out. This one just didn't get as much. Um, and I think in the future, I'm going to try something else with the iron because something else happened while I was doing this, and I don't know if you see those little circles, but I think I have an idea. I have lots of those. And there's another one. Isn't that nice? It's a nice big piece of paper. And it's somewhere between paper and cardstock. It's just a very useful piece. Um, especially for this month. Because you can use these for the all about. And they're a lot more versatile. And we want you to come up with your own all abouts. That would be, I mean, uh, certainly do the projects that we share if you want, and uh, share your photos on the group, but if you come up with other ones, uh, that just means that you're in line and in the bunch for uh, a, a possible prize at the end of the month, because we, we do that sometimes, so, and th there won't always be, but right now, um, we've got a, a really nice family going, and um, it's uh, more manageable for us, too, to count all those <laughs> out, or you know, however we decide to do it that month. Um, this is just a piece. I didn't even crease it first. I just walked right over to my iron with a hunk of wrapping paper tube and ironed it out. Look how flat. Look how flat. Of course, I then laid it over a tray that was rolly, but I mean, look how flat. Crazy, huh? And it creases it really nice, but get it wet. Use a spray bottle. It's the best way to go about it. So we are doing an all about right now. So it's, you know, last night I had this bing, <laughs> this idea. And once I get started, I can't stop. So I made little cutesy tote bags. You know how we all um, uh, have our own bags now for the grocery store because it, you know, it saves the planet and all that. These are so trendy. I think they're so cute. And how cute would these be with like a little Christmas gifts or like jewelry or whatever in that you're gonna give to somebody. And some of them I made with a little pocket, you know, and uh, then I decided that kind of looks like a tote bag right there. It looks like canvas. Um, I could do a whole, you could do them all in canvas. You could sew them. Sewing them would be fun right over the cardboard. Uh, the cardboard just makes them more sturdy and uh, a lot stiffer than paper would be. So it's handy. And then you put this right in your journal like this. You could even use like a, let me see, a teeny tiny clothespin and clip and glue it down into your journal and have like a little bag, a bag clip. Wouldn't that be cute? It would be so cute. You could also put a little magnet on that and stick it on your fridge. It would just be adorable. Um, so we're gonna look at these real quick and then we'll make one. Um, this one, I also put a little a little sheer pocket in, and that is that old wire-edged ribbon. I just cut a piece off of it and took the wire out. I even made a little tassel for this one. I knotted it on there, and then I glued the this part of the tassel down. It's so cute. It's And it looks like a bag I would actually 
have. You know, that's that's the point. You know, you want to make them look more like a tote bag. Um, you could be, it could be a fantasy tote bag. That's fine too. But, uh, uh, you know, like these are bags I would like to own. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> this is a piece of doily that I went, that I rubbed with, um, some gilding paste. And this is just a cord. Um, this might've been a shoelace. I'm not really sure, but it seemed to be the right, the right, uh, width for a, uh, handle. And then this is a little bit of washi tape and a napkin. So there's lots and lots of ways to treat this. You can paint them, you can stencil on them, you can use a decoupage, a napkin, you can use your decorative paper, and you could use fabric, you could use markers, um, any way you want. Um, this one, I was waiting for the glue to dry here. Ah, this one was a pocket, and then I decided I wanted to put flowers across the top. So it's just got this little ribbon. If you wanted to tuck something in it, you could. You know what would be fun? to, uh, let's do, let's use this one. I didn't, cause I didn't put pockets on all of them, but it would be really fun to, somebody sent me this hunk of, of triple fabric. You could make like a, you know, kind of like in a man's pocket square or whatever. You could make something to stick out of it and glue it down. Like, like you've got a pretty little square in your purse or a hanky or something. It would be cute. Um, but we're going to make one and then I'll show you how to get like a, like a charm on the strap and we'll work with that. All right. I'll stick that down in there. There's my tray. Okay. And these are some pieces that I ironed and they came straight to the flat tray. So look how flat they are. They're just amazing. That worked out so good. And if you wanted to, this is, you know, you could double this up and it's real thick for a, a lot of uses there. I'm going to stick this over here. Oops, wrong one. All right, so this is about the size. Now, you could make any size you wanted because it's your journey. It's it's your artwork. Um, but this is about the size that, you know, because that, that tube was a little bit smaller. This one was a little bit bigger. I think this is the one I used with the uh, paper that I ironed out flat, the, the tube that unrolled. And that's why it, it's the size it is. Um, same with the green one, but this is like more toilet paper tube sized and that's fine too, but, uh, you're going to want to cut a piece that's the size of a tote. This could be your fantasy tote. It could certainly be long and skinny or any, uh, extra shape, like with your fancy scissors or whatever, because it's not a real tote bag. You could make it look like a real tote bag though. And that's fine. I'm going to move this tray. So this is a good Good time to use those little teeny tiny pieces, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the bit bin or bit bucket that I was telling you about, this is the kind of stuff, if you'd have a Ziploc baggie in your bin, you'd put these little teeny tiny papers that you love so much in there. Um, like, I love this one and I only had one sheet, so that's something that's precious and it'll go in on a project like this where I can highlight it, you know? But for now, I think we're going to go with this purple because I pulled it out. And for the sake of time, we're just going to go ahead and use paper. So we won't have to wait for fabric glue or paint to dry or, uh, you know, any of that stuff. First of all, you're going to want to discover where your bottom is, decide, and get a little bit of glue. I'm going to use some fast-acting fabric glue here real quick. <clears throat> just because I have it out. So decide where your bottom is. Give it a little open up. And then I just, uh, this is the best way to get a skinny line on there. Just do this. Just scrape your finger across the top. Get any excess out. Any excess. <clears throat> and then I have a little bit of glue to work with too. So this is where you might want to clip it. Seven clothespins later. And in the last video, I told you about the styrofoam that you can use. This is a great time to use it because you don't want that bag to glue shut. So you would get your styrofoam, put something in there, like a pencil, and put this over the top of it. And then it can dry, but not be glued together. So that's, that's just a really good way to do it. And I really should have had one done dry. 
Now, make sure you have the right edge here, because I learned the hard way. And decide how much of this you need. Let me trim up this edge here a little bit. Not that it's going to show. I mean, it's going to be on the inside lining, but just like that. All right. So line your top up there. <clears throat> That's going to get tucked in. And then see how much you need to wrap it all the way around. Just like that. Make sure that's the opening. And like that. Now, not the hard part, but, so we're gonna go like that and we know it's pulled all the way back. Actually, I wanna turn it around. I'm going to take this edge, make sure I know where the opening is, it's with the straight side, and then just put a little bit of glue on that edge. It could be glued down to the cardboard, it doesn't matter, but we know that's, the opening is right here. Okay. Now let's see how much of this we want. Probably... So you're going to leave a little bit at the bottom. It's like making a bag. Oh, let's train it. Let's fold it and fold it. That way we can see where we're at. We're going to cut a little of the excess off for the bit bucket and go to the corner and give it a snip. Flip it over, go to the corner because you folded it and you can see where it's at. Give it a snip. And then pull back the side that doesn't have the seam so the seam is right here facing you. And this is, like I said, how you make a bag. But this is how we're wrapping it. All right, just like that. Now, at this point, we could use some pinking shears and just kind of make that edge look nice. And then fold it over on itself like that. We almost have a bag. That would be a bag at that point if we didn't have that in there. Like a paper bag. This is going to be a, a far sturdier thing that can be used forever, honestly. So we know we've got the top right there. Um, I'm going to train this side too. And now I'm going to go to this corner and just cut off the tiniest little bit because we're going to tuck it in and your purse lining would be all the way around or your bag lining or whatever. And this is just in case you see inside of it. So let's see. Let's make sure it's not so much to tuck in that we can't. So I'm going to trim just a tiny bit off the top of that just to make sure we can get it all the way in there. And then I'm going to fold one flat back. Now this part does not have to be perfect. It's just so when you look inside the, the lip, you're not seeing cardboard, you're seeing paper. Make sure you get it all the way over. Push those corners down. Push them down. All the way down. Same thing on this side. And go down in the middle. Work your way over. Push those corners down really good. Okay, and we're getting to the tricky part here. And I get out a tweezer, or you could, this would probably be a better choice, actually. So then I won't get glue on my tweezers. Okay, so this is where we decide what we're gonna use for a strap. I have all these options here because I think I'm gonna use this paper. So I'm gonna get those out and look and see kind of what 
might go with it. Now this, believe it or not, was one of those annoying strings on a, on a shirt. And I took it off. It's one of my favorite shirts. I just took it off because this, this was always coming untied and it annoyed me. But it kind of matches this. So I think I might use it. I think I might do so. And then you decide, do I want one handle? Do I want two handles? You could actually punch a hole in the side and tie it in if you wanted. But the easiest way to do it is to double it over. I'm going to do two handles. Double it over like this. Kind of the size you think you're going to want. If you want a long strap, that's fine. Just one or two. I think that's good. Leave yourself a little bit extra for gluing because it's going to go right into that corner because think about where your tote strap might be. You're going to pull that all the way out right there and I usually get a little pile of glue when I'm doing something like this so I can get it on all the sides. This is fabric glue. So I want to get it on each side, really get it in there. Then I'm going to lay it on here, and I'm going to push it down, just like that. And then I might even get a little extra and glob it in there, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Now, if you get it anywhere else, you're going to want to get it off, because you don't want your bag stuck together. And then I usually pinch it, just right over it. for glue to dry is no fun. Um, this is where you'd use that styrofoam too. Um, like when you don't want these edges touching each other uh, so they don't glue together. So this might be a time where you would do that. Oh, I meant to cut that in half, didn't I? It's not too late. There we go. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one on this side, but there's already a lot of glue there, so I don't need to go overboard. Make sure they're the same length. If it was something thinner, you could actually knot it um, to make sure that you're getting it at the same, like knot the two pieces together, but I haven't had to do that so far. It's been good. I'm going to run my finger over that, and it will try to come out on you. Until it, until it grabs hold, so it's kind of why I'm pinching it right here. Now I'm going to do something, something fun with this one and not do it the same, so this is a good time to do that. So I got these little charms out thinking, oh how cute it would be to have a little tassel hanging on there, or to have some vintage beads hanging on there. Those really match. Or I've got some sunglasses here. And those are actually a charm that would clip on to the strap, but uh, I could certainly loop it over right now. How cute. But it might be a lot of bulk in the journal itself. Let's see if this is, the reason why I'm doing this now is because if it's anything that you want to loop over so that it's part of it before you glue it in, now is the time. So. So there's the little sunglasses that are about the right size for the tote, but I don't think that's working. Um, I do have something here on a bulb pin. It's a little lock with a heart. I could put that on it. I have this little piece. I don't know what it would be, but it's just like the purse dangly things, you know? It's not any different. That one's kind of cute. Hmm. Options options. That one would lay flat too. Hmm. Here's another option. No. I really like this, but I feel like it might be too bulky in the end. Um, this might be good on the uh, flag that I just made, but okay, so I think I'm going to use this one. I think I'm going to loop it over and I, I don't have to do this part ahead of time because it's a bulb pin and it changes or it opens but okay so I'm going to take these make sure they're the same length get a little bit of that glue this time I'm going to just do it this way so I can get it all just 
roll it in there. Yay for skewers. So put your first one in, poke it into the side. <clears throat> you might need more glue. Put some more glue on there. Ah! It does fight you for a minute. It will. And then put the other one in and make sure your straps are the same length. And you've got the same amount in each side. Just like that. Or ish. Oh, isn't that cute? It's so cute. <laughs> Definitely looks like a little tote bag, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, I love it. You could use wallpaper on these. Um, I made one with, this one has tissue paper um, underneath, and then this is vintage fabric, and I thought this really looked like canvas. I might make a whole one out of that. It would be super cute. All right, so I want to make a pocket in the front. I'm just using paper this time for the sake of time. I do have this. That's nice, isn't it? It really matches. You know what? We might do that one. I had this other idea that if you used, you could probably do it on fabric, but you could use a punch and make it look like it's got a little snappy pocket in the front. That's so cute. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put a, a something that implies a snap on the front. I'm going to make this square. I should use my rotary cutter for this. These are paper scissors. So they're not that great. Um, see how not square it is? You know what? Maybe we use this end. It's the right size. Let's go back in the bit bucket. This was a scarf. I loved it. Uh, I loved it so much that I cut it up uh, because I never wore it as a scarf and I wanted to use it everywhere else. It actually matches my, uh, when I, when I painted my art room, it really matches. So I brought it upstairs to use as a tablecloth and then every time I bring something new in, I lose something else pretty because um, I don't really need it to be pretty. I need it to be functional in here. I could certainly fringe this. Boy, I'm just going to keep trimming until it's tiny. It's like your bangs when you were little. I think I might fringe the bottom. Because it'll look cute. Now I've got all kinds of little bits here. Stick into the glue and a little bit more fringe. There. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to glue this down. This would match this, too, if I wanted to use it. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. And then you lose your pocket that way, but how cute. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing it this time. But there will be one. Okay, I'm going to put this on the top and have it imply that there's a little snappy pocket there. And I'll actually keep it a pocket, though, because I'll ha have it open back here. So let's see. We want to probably glue this fabric on here first. Just to make it easier. I'm going to do this again because I'll probably need it again. So, I'm just going to put it here and there. Probably need more in the back than you will in the front. In the front, it, it, it's going to look like it's just snapped down like a bag. You could use a circle punch for this. You could use a square punch. You could just cut out a shape. You could probably make a heart. It, it, there's, it doesn't matter. It's one of those things. Just when you fold it in half, it'll look like it'll look like a purse. Like that. Oh my gosh, that's cute. It's still a little bit uneven. There we go. 
<laughs> <It's cute. laughs> oh, that's silly. <laughs> and then just a little bit in the front, because it's okay if it sticks up a little in the sides. We're implying a snap. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> it looks like a purse. It looks like leather. It's blue paper with um, gold on it. Gold uh, cream on it. I play with my art supplies a lot to find uh, uh, new ways to use glue, new ways to use paper, and all of my art mediums. Um, I just, I really enjoy doing that. I enjoy passing on the information to you because it's fun. Um, this one I'm actually going to use this really quick so I, I can get a smaller bead. Flip it over. Well, which side is the front? Okay, that is the back. And I'm just going to glue the three sides because it's a pocket and go above your fringe if you make fringe. Don't glue down the fringe because then you lose the fact that it's fringe. Then it becomes frayed fabric, not fringe. Look at that! Huh. I don't even think it needs an embellishment. I was totally going to put something on it, but I think I might just uh, put our little... A key would be cute, too. Because a key would be like, here's my house key. On my tote. On my grocery tote. So I'm just going to put it around the strap. Maybe around both. There we go. So it hangs off to the side. Oh, that's cute. I love it. <laughs> you could go one further and um, actually hang a little scarf off the side, like a little, it would have to be a really heavy drapey fabric, but you could do a long skinny drapey scarf and hang it off the side like, like you would on a tote bag or your gym bag or your work bag. <laughs> that would be really cute. <laughs> So I was going to put other stuff on this, but I don't need to now. I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary. Um, we are going to do one more thing to it, and that is figure out what color snap we have here. Maybe it's pearl. Here, let me see here. Well, that's out. That one looks um, like it matches, but I'm afraid it's too close. It might not be enough contrast there. This one would go. This one would go. That one's out. All right. Well, I guess we're going to use this one. Hope it's enough contrast. It's platinum pearl. And if it's not, I guess I could go back in and put a bead on it or a tiny button or something. I haven't used this in ages. Not this color, at least. Give it one more whoosh. I'm going to try it up here first. There we go. I hope it stands out. So it's a snap. Um, what do you think? It doesn't really stand out, does it? I was afraid of that. Yeah, I guess it does. It's so cute. Oh, I just love it. I love it when I do a project and I love it this much. <laughs> and we all like tiny things. Somebody was saying, you know, why do we like tiny things? And I think it's because uh, we have tiny babies. And as cave people, the first time we had a tiny baby, the very first baby probably wouldn't have survived if it had colic or uh, we're, we're uh, trained to love tiny things so that we love our babies. And by the time they're they're big and snotty teenagers. We already love them and it's too late. <laughs> Is that terrible? <laughs> we have a really good teenager, actually. I, we're pretty lucky. Um, now, at least. All right, so this is our tutorial for today. We made a tiny tote bag. Let me get the glue out of the way here. Glue and scissors and bits of paper. Don't forget to, to uh, start your bit bucket with all your tiny favorite pieces, your favorite papers, your laces, your, you know, anything that's 
small because these are the kind of things that we could do with them to make great embellishments out of them. Look at all these cute little bags. Look at that. And now we have a purple one. I'm going to make these in bulk and set them off to the side uh, to go with my future colored journals. And you could even make a bunch of plain ones. Stick one in your idea book. Don't forget about that. But make a bunch of plain ones that in papers that you use or even in uh, uh, newspaper, book paper, or music paper. And then you can embellish them later with the papers that you're using for a project you're doing or a journal or, you know... Um, or you can put a Christmas stuff on it at Christmas time and, and put them in everyone's stocking or, you know, you could really do anything with them. Well, you have a wonderful evening. Um, I hope uh, you get to crafting and that you share the pictures. And please, if you find found value here, give me a thumbs up because we need those so that we can be found. And um, please stay happy paper people.